Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. I'm going to tell you a little story today about an experience that I had back when I was managing a farm equipment dealership and trying to promote our product that nearly resulted in several fatalities. And luckily it ended good. But I'm also going to tell you a story at the end that my wife told me don't tell that story. It's too disgusting for YouTube. So I decided today I, I want to tell the story because kind of I think it's funny, but I'm going to put it at the end. So if you're grossed out by disgusting stories, you can quit watching, kill my watch time at the end. But what I want to talk about today is Christmas parades. As I record this, it's nearly Christmas 2022, and every little town in Mid America seems like has a Christmas parade, and some are better than others. Um, I've marched in them in marching band. I've, I've kids had horses in uh, Christmas parades. I've, I've been around Christmas parades forever. We've got a little Christmas parade in Ozark, Missouri, where I live. And uh, a couple, three years ago, my wife and I are there with another couple and we're talking and, and the parade's going by and there's floats and there's uh, marching bands and all that. And then there's a string of cars, like people have fixed up their old cars and. And uh, some of them are better than others. You know, there'd be an old Nova all hiked up and everything. It was, oh, that's cool. And then there'd be cars that's just like people drove them in off the streets. You know, I don't look any different than anything else. And people are all waving. You know, I, 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 I guess I don't really get the Christmas parade thing where you're all happy and waving and throwing candy out the window and all that. But there were several people that were running for office and they, they had to, uh, Fred for state senator. We have our parade way early before uh, election, and they all uh, just car after car of politicians. And pretty soon we're sitting there, kind of talking to the other couple, and we've lost interest in the parade. And we look up, and traffic's going both ways. So we're like, "Ooh, I guess the parade must have ended." And now we're just kind of sitting here in lawn chairs in the cold, watching traffic. So anyway, that's I don't get parades, but. My story today about tractor driving is about the time Springfield, Missouri has a really good Christmas parade and it goes right through the downtown area around the square where if you're a history buff, Wild Bill Hickok had a shootout with another guy right there on the square. And um, my tractor story was uh, my cousin goes to a Baptist church in Springfield and they we're thinking about having a float in the Christmas parade. And, and I was talking to my cousin at one of our family gatherings. And I said, well, if you ever need a, a tractor and a trailer for the float, let me know. Because I worked at dealership. We had tractors and we always loved to promote them at high attended events like that. So I said, just let me know. I'll get you a tractor and a trailer. Well, a couple of weeks later, she calls me and says, hey, we want your tractor and trailer. So uh, I had our truck driver haul out a a tractor and a trailer and hooked them together and they put together a float for Ridgecrest Baptist Church in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, parade day came around and uh, I wanted to be the one that drove the tractor so if anything happened I'd, I'd be there and I, I didn't expect anything to happen. You're driving you know five miles an hour what could happen? As the parade got close to starting I got to meet the pastor from her church and his first words were, are you saved? He was concerned about my salvation uh, more than he was if I had any tractor driving experience. But anyway, he was he was on the float with a lot of his congregation and they were singing Christmas carols and I think they were throwing candy out and it was a festive occasion. So the parade starts and, and off we go. And, and it's pretty uneventful at first, no, no problem. And I'm, I'm up in the, in the cab and it's gotten cold. It started out the day like in the 50s and it's dropping like a rock and it's down like in the 20s. Now everybody's freezing. Well, I'm up in the tractor cab and I got my young daughter with me and we're, we're tooting along in the, in the Christmas parade and just having a great time. Church is happy, they're singing. I, we, can, we got the back door cracked open. We can hear the song songs and everybody's smiling and having a great time. What could possibly go wrong? Well, now at the Springfield Christmas Parade, they've got barriers up to keep people back. But in 2010, there were no barriers. So as the parade is coming down close to the square, the crowd is getting closer to the parade. And there's people in front of us throwing out candy and there's kids gathering it. And you don't stop a 90 horse tractor on a dime. So I'm starting to think, 
I, I am a little bit scared about how this is going down and there's no law enforcement, there's nobody around. It's just a throng of people and, and all of these floats going forward. And some of the floats were really fascinating. But uh, anyway, as we start to get to the square, the square you come in, it makes an immediate left and then a hard right and you just go around in a circle and you exit out the east end of the square. And as I'm coming into the square, I'm like, oh crap, the people are close to the road. Well, they're on both sides of the road. And as we're coming around the first curve, I notice the second curve, a bunch of kids have crowded way in so they can get all the good candy. And I mean, they're right where my front wheels need to be to get around with the trailer on the back. As we're starting to make the second curve, I'm driving the tractor and I'm headed right for a whole bunch of kids and their eyes start going like this when they see me getting close. And, and a couple of them are starting to back up, but some of them are not seeing it. And I mean, I've got to get around them. Now, on the other side, there are pillars which look like they've been made out of concrete that if I don't cut it tight enough and they're on both sides of the road, that trailer is going to rub up against them on both sides of the road. And so I've got to navigate. I'm trying to swing out so I, I miss a pillar with the trailer and I'm swinging into the crowd and half the kids are going like this and the other half are not paying attention. So this is all happening in slow motion at five miles an hour and as I'm getting closer and get right into the curve, it's getting intense and I'm not thinking I'm going to make it. I hear the Ridgecrest Baptist Church, their Christmas carols have ended and I look back and there's a lady back on the back of the trailer pointing toward the concrete pillar in the back of the trailer because I'm not clearing it. So anyway, everything kind of slows down at that point and goes into a surreal feeling and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I've come out here to promote New Holland tractors and S&H farm supply and if I mow down and run over a bunch of kids and there's like 10 fatalities, that's not going to be very good publicity for them. Well, uh, fortunately, the story ends well. I missed the kids by nothing. I think any of those kids that were on the edge of the parade could have reached out and touched my wheel like this close. I missed the concrete pillar. There were no marks on the trailer and I got through the parade route. One of the scariest things I've ever done, it was so scary. After that, I had to drive back to the dealership and I got lost. I was supposed to make a turn, I missed it. I ended up on a major highway going back from the Christmas parade with a tractor to the dealership about maybe 10 miles. It was a day to remember and uh, anyway, I got through it. Well, that's my tractor story. I feel like I'm a pretty good tractor driver to have navigated through that. Now for my most disgusting story, and if you're e easily repulsed, don't listen to this part. Because it's disgusting, and it involves a Christmas parade on the square in Springfield, Missouri. So I had twin daughters that were uh, maybe five or six years old, maybe three or four, I can't remember. They were still small enough I could, I could hold one on my shoulders. And they wanted to go to the Springfield Christmas Parade and, and Carmen, my wife, wanted to do some shopping or just have a day off. So I said, I'll take the kids to the Christmas Parade downtown and you, you have the day off. So we went out, grabbed a bite to eat and got at the Christmas Parade like way early. And we're right on the square where the Christmas Parade is going to go right by us and we're right on the front row. We've got the best seat of anybody. There's a, a little restaurant there now called Civil Kitchen. It's on the east side of the square, and I mean the parade was going to come right by us. And so as, as the parade starts, we hear the marching bands and everybody is coming. Again, if you're repulsed by gross stories, this would be a good time to just kill the video. So I've got one daughter. I've got twin daughters. I've got one daughter on my shoulder. She's got a perfect view, and then the other daughter is right here. And, and we, we are right right in the middle of the parade. And, and here comes the parade and they're marching down uh, 
and I, I, I don't remember what the first thing was, maybe a float or the mayor or something in the parade. But the second thing in the parade was the Springfield Kennel Club, the dog, the dog people. And there was like 180 dogs and people walking their dogs down the parade route and all waving. Well, it all cute, and they had a bunch of really cute dogs, and my daughters are just eating it up. And right at the end was a little beagle dog, and as the parade is happening, that beetle dog, beagle dog stops and squats and does its business. Not just a number two, but a number two a diarrhea number two just a big dog plop pile right there in the middle of the street and right behind it here comes the Willard marching band Willard Missouri marching band and they are marching toward that mess in the middle of the road well, I was standing around with a bunch of other parents and we're all like, somebody do something. Well, there was a trash can right there and somebody had eaten a pizza and left the box in the trash can. And bear in mind, there's a little gap between the kennel club and the marching band, but it's, it's coming. And so one of the dads grabbed this pizza box out of the trash, took it out to the pile of dog poop, opened it up, flattened it out, and pushed it down right in the dog poop. And we all applauded. We, everybody watching knew exactly what had happened and what he'd done. And so now the band is just going to walk over the pizza box and, and it's kind of stuck there. It ain't going nowhere. Everybody lives happily ever after. But the very front of the parade was the band director and he's marching along in front of the band and he's not seeing the dog thing but he sees the pizza box and not wanting his band to march through trash in the road he runs up grabs the pizza box and throws it off to the side toward us At that point, it had been like a car wreck or a train wreck or something where I couldn't not look. But at that point, me and the girls, we turned away because we couldn't, and, and actually, we, we left that part of the square because we couldn't bear to watch. And I'm telling you, the wind was out of the west. It was a little bit intense right there anyway. We had to go somewhere else to watch the parade. That's my gross story. It was hilariously funny later. But at the time, wasn't too funny. Thanks for watching my videos.